Pelican cases, folks. Pelican cases. These things are built to last, made to go across the world and carry your equipment safely, protecting it from rain, hail, snow, and turbulence, and everything else that could happen. Maybe even protects you from a lightning storm. But when you buy this kit, sometimes it comes with some modifications that you have to do. Just over this is the Pelican. 1510 case, this is the one that you can carry on planes. It's made for the overhead compartment on planes. Watertight, so this guy on the, on the, if you can see right here, water, this guy's swimming in the ocean carrying his Pelican case, because he needs to get someone stat with his camera equipment or whatever he, he's got in there. He's about to kill some sharks. I don't condone, I'm just saying that's what he's doing in the picture. Must be like an action movie or something. My point is, these Pelican cases come with some modifications. And the modifications, if you buy the foam one, where it comes with the foam kit, are ah, that it doesn't come with anything structured for you. Which can be great if you know what you want in here and you know how you want to do it. But if you don't know, then it's going to take a little planning, which, uh, which is where I come in, which I can tell you and help you out with how to plan out your Pelican case with foam. Uh, we're gonna do it today, I'm gonna do it live, not live, but taped, with my lenses and some of my camera equi equipment. I'm gonna show you what I'm doing. It's gonna be a little time lapse, a little quick motion type action. I'm gonna break it down step by step of what I'm doing. And again, all this is information is in the directions for this. Um, but you know, sometimes directions are you can read it, but you're like, I don't really get what they're saying. But yeah, I'm gonna dive in today. I'm gonna show you what I put in here. Of course, you can put anything you want in here. You could put uh, your, your dog accessories for when you go on the road with your dog, cat accessories when you go on the road with your cat, or even your turtle accessories when you go on your road with your turtle. But I'm using it today for camera equipment. Lenses, batteries, the camera itself. So I'm gonna dive in, I'm gonna go step by step, I'm gonna give you a little fast motion tutorial about what I do to get this set, and then we're gonna end the video, I'm gonna show you the final results. Dive in, snap in, and let's get into the Pelican 1510 case. Now folks, if you like videos like this and you wanna watch more content that dives into unboxings, vloggings, camera equipment, my life in general, be sure to subscribe like and comment on this video so you can stay updated with other videos I post. Let's get back to the modifications. Placing everything where you want it first is super important before cutting anything out. Obviously you want to know what you're putting in, where you're putting it in before you do it. So in the directions it does say to leave about two square lengths away from another item, but for me I did three because of the lenses and the cameras. Really just want to make sure it was stabilized in there and it really felt good and safe. Obviously removing this foam is destructive, so you want to make sure what you're moving, how you're moving it. So that's why this planning stage is super important before you start anything else you do. Then it was time to trace. I took out the top foam and only did that to start with the initial tracing, leaving the second bottom foam inside the case still. Since certain items needed only to go through the first foam, I figured I'd get to the bottom foam of the case later. The case does have a little layer of foam at the very bottom, so if you do need to go all the way down, whatever items you put in will be protected. But like for example, this Sigma lens, I didn't necessarily need to go all the way down and also it was too tall to go all the way down. So I decided to lay it on the side. The directions recommended chalk or toothpicks, but we thought chalk made more sense. It's easy to wipe off after if you're concerned about that. Really take your time, trace out the items and make sure it's where you want it. Then it was time to cut out the pieces. In the directions they recommended an electric knife, but I didn't have one, nor did I feel like I wanted to buy one, and I didn't think it was really necessary. So we started with a box cutter, and we started cutting out the sections we had traced. Then, at a certain point, we just felt like it was easier to use our fingers, because the foam is actually really easy to pull out, and it's all spliced into these little, like, cube sections. So you can really easily remove it if it's, uh, you know, a lot of rectangles, squares, which the difficult part was the circles, but I still felt like it was pretty doable with just pulling at the the traced out sections with our fingers. Now, I wouldn't entirely recommend this for everyone, um, but you know, there was two hands, me and my girlfriend, Rachel, and I felt like it was really effective for what we needed it for. So obviously, you know, use your best judgment when you're doing it, but it, the foam is really easy to pull out and it is easy to kind of form the sections you need. Also, as you see right here, Rachel did make a little mistake, uh, but the Gorilla Glue came in handy. So if you do make mistakes here and there, don't worry, because you can fix them with glue. Uh, I would always err on the side of caution when pulling out the sections and don't pull out too much to start. Test your items in there, see if they fit, 
if you need to pull out more, then pull out more. Don't pull out more than you think you need to right off the bat. Then it was time to put the top foam in and decide what items needed to cut through the top to the bottom. This is where the chalk and toothpicks really came in handy. I went through the top sections that we already traced and cut out and I marked the bottom piece of foam with the chalk and the toothpicks, kind of the corners, knowing that I'm accurately cutting out the pieces through the bottom. Now, again, not all the lenses and all the pieces needed to go all the way to the bottom. Only certain items like the taller lenses and the batteries, I wanted to make sure they go all the way to the bottom because they have a lot of batteries. So you can kind of pick and choose what you want to go all the way to the bottom. But for me, it was only, it was probably about 70% of the items I'm putting in go from the top to the bottom. And uh, some of the items just, just through the first level of foam. So that's up to you what you want to do. Along the way, I would just always double check and make sure that things are fitting correctly and they aren't too loose. So again, do not pull out more than you need to. If you do need to pull out more, you can always do that, you know, as you put the piece in. Now again, always are on the side of caution. And for me, I always like my items a little more snug than loose. So, you know, you can just use your best judgment with that. So this is what I ended up with, folks, after about probably like 90 minutes of adjusting, measuring, taking things out. As you can see, all the lovely uh, foam. It could rain and foam, rain on me. But anyways, let's clear all this excess foam. We have our kit here, which is exciting. We have, as you can see, we have the camera right here. We got some lenses. We got our little battery compartment. We got a lens hood area. We got like a longer lens compartment. I feel like this is versatile for all lenses because like lenses don't range that much in like width necessarily. Obviously length, depending on like the type of lens, telephoto or anything like that. But for these type of, you know, maybe 16 to 70, 16 to 105 type lenses, this kit will, should generally always be enough. But I'm pretty happy with it and I think it's gonna work out really well. The good thing about this case is it seems very sturdy. And I don't think any of these lenses or like going anywhere because I feel like they're very tucked in. So traveling, you know, internationally, it's gonna be good because uh, everything will just stay put and stay the way it's supposed to be. Hopefully you learned something in that video. I know we broke it down. We actually had a few missteps there. We you had to use this beautiful uh, Gorilla Glue, which comes in handy. It's, st it's all staying together now, uh, but, and it looks okay. And, um, you know, we didn't use the, uh, the electric knife that the directions advised. Maybe that would have made it a little more deliberate and exact. But again, these are really easy to peel, like I mentioned in the voiceover. So, um, honestly, the, for the way it is, I'm pretty happy with it. And I think it's going to be really successful and really helpful for me traveling to Sweden and uh, I'm excited. So let me know if you have any questions about this case, where you use it. I'll, do, I'll give you an update. If I don't post this video by the time, I'll give you a little update to see how it worked out, it panned out, and if uh, it was effective. And I'll let you know if I go underwater like this guy right here and take it in the depths of the ocean. Anyways, guys, ah, see, look, you don't hear anything rattling around in there. Thanks so much for watching, folks. If you like this video and want to learn more about camera equipment, items, lenses, cameras, vlogging, be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and I'll see you in the next one, folks. Let's go, guys. See, look, nothing's bouncing around. I can just toss this in the air. You don't hear anything. <laughs>